this is what it would look like if it was in a car. It'd be just like this, okay? Just like this. And come on. Damn it. And then that bolt that I was telling y'all about was right here. All right, y'all. Welcome back to Philly D's Garage. So today we got the LS400 in the building. Um, I got to change the uh, transmission fluid on it. Um, it's been a while since I did it the last time. Uh, so it's pretty easy. Um, it's really not that hard. Uh, so let's just get right into it. So the first thing you want to do uh, from the top, um, your dipstick. Uh, let me get a light real quick. So your dipstick, um, it's like a two-piece uh, dipstick, all right? So what you got to do is, as you can see, this is your dipstick here, your transmission dipstick. And about halfway down, there's a bolt and a bracket that holds in the top part of the dipstick. So once you take that bolt out, the top part of this dipstick will come apart. So all you got to do is just twist it out. And then the remaining half of the dipstick is going to come out or drop down with the transmission pan because you got to drop the uh, transmission pan to change the filter that's inside of there. Um, so from remembering the last time that I did it, uh, the easiest way to get this uh, bolt off of this bracket is from the bottom. OK, so I didn't already did that. Um, here's the bolt right here at a uh, 12 millimeter all right so i already got the bolt from down there i used the uh extension which is this and a swivel you're going to need a swivel even from underneath now if you can manage to get it from the top you, you're going to need i don't know more than just a fucking swivel you, you're going to need uh a prayer because it's just it's just difficult the funny thing is, it's crazy. It's really not in the, the worst spot. Like, even though I knew I did it from the bottom the last time, I still even tried to get it from the top because it just seems so easy. But, you know, you get in there with a small wrench. I went in there with my little, uh, my little snap-on stubby, but then I didn't have enough leverage because it was too small. So just get it from the bottom, save you some time. Now, if you want to take out this dipstick, all right, as you can see, it says lock, twist to the left, or unlock, twist to the right. Okay, now I'm saying that because right here, it has this little lever right here. And as you can see, when you twist it, it hits that lever. So honestly, really all you gotta do is either push this lever out and pull the dipstick up, or you could do what it says and twist it to the left to unlock it. So do either way. Um, so that's how you take the dipstick out. I mean, you, you do that if you're just checking your transition fluid. Um, so now, like I said, I already took that, uh, that nut out. So now you got to do is just, um, twist this first half of the tube out. Let me see. You know what? Let's just take this dipstick out. Get that out the way. So I'm up there. Let me see if we can get this tube out. It might be stubborn, so you just gotta twist it out. And this is all you got to do. Here it is. This is all you got to do from the top. All right. So there's a dipstick, or half of the dipstick right there. All right. So that's it. This is the top half of the dipstick right there. So clean this off. Um, there's a gasket right here. Uh, Oh wow, 
my gasket must have stayed in there because it's not here. Um, if the gasket is not there, then definitely put one. But it must have got stuck in there because... Oh, no, here it is right here. I was about to say because I know damn well I put the gasket back or replaced it. You know Philly D don't play around like that. But here you go. That's the gasket. You can change it. You know, best thing to do is to change it, but uh, you don't have to. It's still good to put it back. So we're gonna lay this up here. We're gonna uh, clean that before we put it back on. So yeah, that's it. That's all you gotta do from the top. That's literally all you do from the engine bay um, is take that dipstick out. Um, as y'all can see, I got my note go on here. I always try to charge my batteries. Uh, whenever I got a car in here, I charge it up. So, quick tip. Um, if you got a maintainer, put it on while the car is in the house. You know what I'm saying? Or while you got it in. So, you got to maintain that battery. So, everything else um, is literally from the bottom. So, and when I get under there, I'll show you where that bolt was at. Because you're going to have to. I'll probably just um, show you our picture exactly where it's at because it's gonna be kind of difficult underneath to um to do anything because we're not on the we're not on the lift obviously and i forgot to mention yeah obviously i didn't already jacked up the car i got four jacks at each corner lifted the whole car up i should have went higher but i didn't so that's one thing y'all will have to do is jack the car up so you can get up under there so um i'm gonna get set up real quick and we're gonna go underneath all right y'all when you're on your way underneath the car, make sure you take a pan, all right? So I got a nice size pan right there. You're gonna need that for everything to drain inside. So now we're gonna go up underneath. Um, but first we gotta get our socket because we can't take the drain plug off without our socket. All right, so let's get up under there. up underneath the last 400 baby uh, let's get some light Ooh. all right so it's gonna be real tight up under here because uh, I'm not on the lift so I know I told you guys I wanted to show you uh where that boat is at oh fuck and I forgot my uh screwdriver so I could point it out to you but basically uh, get the light up there real quick do y'all see that hole right there straight ahead right above the, the steering knuckle that is the bolt for the uh, the oil disc stick I mean not the oil disc stick the transmission uh, disc stick so Let's see if I can get a better light on there. So, y'all see that bolt right there? I meant to bring something so I could point it out, but of course I forgot. So, it's right there. So, you see why it's much easier to get this nut out from the bottom because it's it's easier from this from the bottom. So, um, let me show you guys what this uh, pan looks like. It's kind of hard to get situated up underneath this damn car. So, there's a transmission pan. Bam, right there. Turn these lights around so y'all can see. A little bit better. All right, so you're gonna have these bolts all the way around the transmission pan. All right, and I totally forgot my 10 millimeter. Fucker. All right, so let me see you got the pan right here. We're gonna pull that pan over So as we take these off um, You know what I'm tripping We got the drain bolt on this I'm tripping I'm thinking of the Buick right now because the Buick don't got a drain on it um, So we can drain this out let it drain then you take the bolts off all the way around and you can maneuver this pan off so of course, I left 
the socket. Wow. Bam, we got our uh, 14 millimeter. So we're gonna uh, slide back over here. All right, so you got your 14 millimeter. Break that loose. That was easy. So, wow. So if you don't want it to drain on you, cause it's gonna come pouring out, guess what? I gotta go get my handy dandy tool. We watched them live in color, y'all. Wrong joke. Um, here we go. So I don't have my filter yet. I have my Amsoil transmission fluid uh, over there on the Amsoil station. I do have that. But the filter I had to order, I'm getting it from Napa. Napa doesn't, they didn't have it, so they had to order it. So I just called them. They said it's in. So we're gonna go pick it up. Ugh. All right, so here we go back inside with the inside footage. So put your, your tool here. And we're gonna twist it off. And we're gonna let all that fluid, fluid go into the pan. Yeah, look at that. See, that's why I'm changing this oil because your transmission floor should be red. Okay? Not any other color. Okay? Look how dark, look how dark that fluid is. That's dark. That is dark. And honestly, I didn't think it would be this dirty, but um, I had checked it a while back and I seen how dirty it was. And that's what made me change it. Um, but that was, that's been a while since I checked it. So it's even dirtier than it was. Um, but yeah, when you check your fluids, the transmission fluid should be one of them. All right, so look how dirty that is. That's dirty. Transmission fluid should be red, at least in all the cars that I got. Okay, so we're gonna let that drain. It's gonna it's probably drain out around three and a half quarts, three and a half to four quarts, something like that. We're just doing the drain and fill. We're not, you know, in the filter. We're not taking all the fluid out the, uh, torque converter and all that. We're just filtering fluid. So, um, I'm gonna let that drain some more. Then I'm gonna come back and uh, get these 10 millimeter bolts all the way around and uh, get that pan off. All right, y'all, so I just got back. Um, I went to Napa and got the uh, filter. All right, it took them all day, but Nobody else had it. They did. So we went with the Napa guys. Um, so this is the filter right here. We want to take the old one out once we drop the pan and get it out. And this is the gasket. I don't know. It feels pretty cheap, but. We'll see what happens. Um, all right. So, um, oh yeah. And I also changed the gasket on this tube right here. It's crazy because with the old one, it, ain't, it didn't look too bad, right? Like it was on there, it didn't look too bad. But once I replaced it with the new one, I was like, wow. It's, it's a big difference. Just because it feels good or it looks good don't actually mean it's good. Or it could mean that. But I'm telling you, when I put this new one on, it just feels it's firmer. It's just it's gonna it's gonna hold hold up much better to that one, alright? And nine times out of ten, you might not change your transmission fluid for a while. So you might as well just change it while you're at it. Um I had this kit. I got both kits, the metric and the standard. 
I had these kits before I was even a mechanic. So as you can see, I barely use it, but um, it is what it is. So if you got a kit, you got the you got the O-ring, you might as well just change it, get it out the way. But if you don't, and if it's still in pretty good condition, then reuse it. All right, it's up to you. So we're gonna get up under there and take the bolts off the drain pan because it should be done uh, draining by now. I would I would think it's been a little while. Look like he's done. I don't hear nothing draining under there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna get up under there, take the bolts off all the way around, drop the pan, and we're gonna change that filter real quick. Yo, I had to show y'all this, y'all. Hold on. <laughs> Cause you're trying to get in good and stuff. You just need to just just lay back and relax and let me concentrate on what I'm doing. Cause see, I'm gonna let my fingers do the walking, and I'm gonna Watch let my body shit. do the talking. Ah, yeah, right there. Yeah. Oh, you like that? A lot of tension in my lower body. So look at his I'm face. A little extra attention back there, my brown sugar. <laughs> We're just asking you, shall I receive you, shall. <laughs> See, but let me show you something. No, let me show you something. <laughs> See, this is a trick that I learned from my cousin and them. It's like a Chinese foot massage. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh. Oh. Why did he do that? <laughs> Yo. Yo. And what I do is, I don't, I don't want to like scratch you and then you'll be all right. Girl, you ain't got to worry about that. Be as rough as you want. Okay, man. Okay. Man. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I'll see y'all underneath. All right, so we back up underneath the car now. Um, I think the fluid has drained as much as it's going to drain. Um, you see a little drip, drip, drip. So don't worry about getting it all because you never get all of it. But um, I still got the magnet sitting there. It held my my uh, drain plug right where I wanted it at, instead of falling in all that fluid. So that worked perfectly. Uh, um, yeah, uh, Napa didn't have the plug. They telling me another another day for the plug. So I passed on it because I don't have another day. Um, all right, so we're gonna put this uh, drain plug back in for now. I thought it had a, 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 a washer on it. It don't even have a washer on it. Unless it's stuck to the uh, pan. You guys see it? I don't know, I can't even see. It looked like it's on there. You know what, I ain't gonna try to wipe it or nothing because then it might fall in there. So what I'm gonna do is put this plug uh, back on now. And then when I take the pan off, I'll look at that. So, I'll screw it back in for now. All right, so now that we did that, we can take off all these 10 millimeter bolts um, that's around it. All right, y'all, so we're back up underneath the car. Um, I got uh, all the bolts off. I'm down to the, to the last one. All right, so I was using my uh, Milwaukee uh, stubby half inch. It's a little overkill, but I chose that over the anchor saw because it's a little faster and I was trying to get this done. So, um, you know what? I'm not going to be able to hold this uh, GoPro and take that bolt off at the same time. So, all right. So once you get that, uh, your last bolt out, it's still going to drip some. So make sure you got your pan. It's still up underneath it. Um, and once we uh once I get this pan off, I'm gonna move this closer because you know your whole valve, valve body is this whole entire part there. So we want the pan to be underneath all of that so it can catch any fluid out. So right now I'm just moving this stuff 
out the way because it's in a way. I'm gonna have to turn this pan uh, all the way around like this. Basically the length of the pan. Um, so what I'm gonna do now, I'm gonna wiggle this out. I don't want this thing to drop inside of there. So, I'm gonna wiggle it out real quick. All right, so, got the last bolt out. Um, in order for you to get this pan to, uh, to come out, um, you might have to loosen these two bolts here to give you a little bit of play. Um, and at first I had loosened the, this uh, transmission cooler line, uh, cooler line bolt so I can wiggle these lines up back and forth because um, the transmission pan is like up in here. So these lines get in the way and this cross brace right here gets in the way. Um, so yeah, if you need some room, um, loosen these two bolts up and this bolt here and you need some more play like that. So. Now that I got all the bolts out, um, should be able to drop it out like that. Um, and another thing is, is the, the dipstick itself, as I can see right there, it, it gets in the way. Like, so that's another thing you gotta, you gotta finagle with is the dipstick itself and then this cross brace and uh, uh, what else I say? These uh, cooler lines. Let's sit this down. Damn, that was heavy. All right, so, um, so I'm gonna move this out. I'm gonna take the pan up and uh, clean it out and slide this up up under here because this stuff is still obviously dripping. Um, you know what? And while you're at it, um, yeah, I'm gonna take this uh. This is a filter, y'all. I don't know, I almost forgot. <laughs> um, so you got three bolts here, 10 millimeter, one, two, three. You take that out. And um, what I was trying to say is, while you're under here, check all these other bolts, your valve body bolts. They're all 10 millimeters. Just make sure they're still tight, because over time they can uh, get loose or whatever. But just double check them. Don't over tighten them. Just make, if they're loose, snug them up. Um, and, uh, Want to make sure they're tight before you put everything back. So, um, let me grab the 10 mil and I'm gonna take off this filter real quick. All right, y'all. So I got my 10 millimeter. I already loosened them up. Um, all I gotta do is screw them out. Now these ain't gonna be that tight. So make sure when you put them back, you don't put them any tighter than it was because they can strip out real easy. And try not to drop your boat inside the oil. Oh man. I think I forgot one. So there's actually four boats. Four boats to hold it in. I don't know why I thought it was three. Alright, so. Get this one out. It's gonna be a lot, it's still gonna be a lot of fluid in there when you get these off. Uh, once you drop this filter. See, there's still fluid in there, so once you get this last bolt off.
These bolts are so short, but they're so long. All right, so that's the last bolt. Most of the fluid had already came out. So that's the old one. And that's your valve body right there. So this is all your solenoids and stuff like that. They basically control the flow of your fluid and where it's going. So like I was saying earlier, just you can just make sure these bolts are still snugged up. Um, you know, before you put everything back on, just touch them up real quick. And uh and that's it. So we're gonna go up top and uh we'll clean that pan up. Alright y'all, so I cleaned this pan out uh, with brake clean. You just use brake clean to uh, do that. And I just rinse it all out into this bucket. You want to clean it up. You want to clean these magnets off. Um, your pan should have magnets in them. Um, so basically what they do is they catch any type of uh, metal breakdown that your transmission will have. So if you don't have these in there, you might want to go get them because you don't want this uh, metal floating around within your transmission. And that's what these are designed to prevent. Um, so this, uh, the old gasket clean came off pretty easy too. Cause um, what you don't want to do with this, you don't want to use um, gasket maker on your pan. There's no reason to use gasket maker when you have a gasket. So a lot of people, uh, still use gasket maker for um, for that extra uh, sealant, but all it does is make a big mess, um, and it can actually prevent your gasket from doing what it's supposed to do. So you don't need nothing extra. You don't need no gasket maker. Um, and as you can see uh, from the last time I did it, there's no there's no gasket maker here. Look all the way around. See that? So when I peeled this up off of the pan, it came up nice and easy the way it should. It didn't rip. You know, this gasket is still in, is still in its shape. I'm not going to say it's in good shape because I was using it. I was, it's been used. Um, but you can tell, you know, it's not in that bad shape. Plus, it wasn't leaking. You know, I didn't have any leaks or none of that. I'm just basically changing my fluid just based off my miles. So... I have no shift issues whatsoever. Um, but what we are going to use is uh, uh, some high tech, Permatex high tech gasket sealant. Basically, the only thing you use this for is just to help it seal to the pan, basically, so it won't move while you're putting the pan on, stuff like that. Uh, that's exactly what I used the last time, uh, this stuff. So it works good. Um, you can either sp spray the gasket or you can spray the side, you know, on a pan. Um, you don't want to get nothing on the block. So the part that's going to meet to the engine, you don't want none of that gasket making none of that. Cause I'm telling you, it's going to make a big mess when you take this off the next time. So you just want to get some sealant just like this and just spray a little bit all the way around. You don't need a lot. That's all you need. Just like that. And then you want to put the gasket on. Once you put the gasket on, the gasket on. Wow, try to say that, guys. <laughs> I cannot say that. But once you put the gasket on, um, let it sit for a couple minutes. It's going to get tacky and all that stuff. Um, and then you want to put it back on the, the engine block the same way you took it off. So... Um, I think I covered everything. Oh, I wanted just to show y'all this piece. So while it's out the car, I almost forgot. See, this is, remember I was saying it's a two piece. So this is what it would look like if it was in a car. It'd be just like this. Okay. Just like this. And come on. Damn it. And then that bolt that I was telling y'all about was right here. See, that's the bracket. So if you follow this from up top all the way down, okay, 
That's what I was referring to when, it's, when I said it's basically like a two-piece. All right. This part down here is fixed. It's fixed to the transmission pan. So, um, look like it's like pressed in there. See it? Right there. So, when you check your fluid, your dipstick comes right here and checks it. So, um, I'm going to put this gas gasket on and I'm going to mount it back up to the, uh, to the engine block. All right. So, so I literally just got mad, like just now. So I go to put the gasket on and come to find out the gasket is wrong. Mother. So I waited all day for Napa to get this, this kit and then it gave me the wrong kit. Mother. As y'all can see, this is the new one. I think I said earlier when I felt it, or like it felt cheap or something. But it is what it is. But this is the new one. And this is the old one. As y'all can see, it's a big difference. Look at this. Look at this. They gave me the wrong shit. Look at this, man. Now, I'm, I'm kind of tempted to use this gasket again because I don't have time to wait. I don't want my car sitting in here any longer. I got to get it out the shop. So, oh my, yo, now here's the thing, because when I was at the store, I was checking to see if it was right. So what happened was I pulled the filter out. I pulled the filter from out of the uh, box. So I seen that the filter was right. Like it's literally the same filter, but I never looked at the gasket. So here goes the filter right here. This is the old one. As you can see, uh, it's the same thing. One, two, three, one, two, three. Bolt up here, bolt up here. It's the same filter. Literally the same filter. Okay, so when I took it out of the box while I was standing there with the guy, I mean, that's, I, I, I looked at it and I walked away with it because I figured, well, if the filter was right, why wouldn't the gasket be right? You know? It's literally the same. It's the same filter. Fucking Napa, man. Oh, this shit. So. That is crazy, y'all. So y'all make sure when y'all go to buy your, uh, your kit, your filter kit, that it's it has the right filter and gasket. <laughs> man. So, in order for me to do this tonight, to get this done, is I will have to use this gasket. And then everybody else is saying that they had to order it, they didn't have it, and all this shit. I probably, I should have just ordered it offline like I usually do, and would have had everything. Damn. Like I said, y'all, I wasn't leaking, but I just want y'all to be aware that this might happen to you. So when you go buy your kit, make sure the kit has a gasket, the right gasket, and a filter. So I'm thinking these guys just stuff some shit in the box and fucking, here's a box right here. Fuck, motherfuckers, man. I don't even know if it's the right box. They don't even have a part number on the box. Here we go. What is that, One seven. Platinum transmission. What the fucking? I don't think I'm never going to Napa again. I swear to God. I swear. Every time I go to Napa, it's something dumb. Oh man. All right. So check this. I'm going to reuse this gasket. I don't. I don't think you guys should use it. Don't use it if you don't have to. But mine is. Mine is fine. I'm going to use it. And if it leaks, I can always change it. So, I think my fucking tacky tech stuff then already got tackied up already because it's been like 15 minutes. Um. All right, all right, y'all. So, like I said before, sanding it again now. Put this on, bolt it back on, fill it up, and we're gonna be done with it. All right, y'all. So, it's a few days later. Um. I ended up uh, 
replacing the uh i had to order a new gasket um because i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't use the old one so i bit the bullet i ordered the new gasket um so it took a couple of days i got it and it's in there all right so let me just show you guys real quick what i got going on go up underneath and show you guys what we got going on so oh shit oh, start jump something so we got the uh we got the gasket pin back on um as you can see uh, let me get up under here it's so much harder on the floor y'all um let me see all right so the bolts are all the way around as you can see um i'm gonna let y'all know i'm gonna give you a quick tip real quick uh first of all it's going to be difficult to do this on the ground but if y'all can see when y'all taking this pan out um i don't remember removing anything to get this pan out when i did it before i don't remember um but for sure this time uh what i did to get this pan out i loosened these two bolts i actually took them all the way out but as you can see this bracket goes all the way to the to the flames for the catalytic converter okay there's the bolt that goes through this bracket and it's all the way on the other side too all right so as you can see these bolts are not in a great condition to come out if you try to take these out they're going to break um so you don't want to take them out if you don't have to uh um but i took these two bolts out so you could get a little bit of play right here and i also took out this bolt here that transmission bolt uh the transmission line bolts transmission cooler line bolts uh i just talk, took out this one so it could give me a little bit of play um with these lines because up in here this pan is not going to come out as easy as it looks all right it's just not going to slide out uh so what you got to do is you want to take these bolts out, loosen it. If you need a pry bar to, to pry down a little bit on that bracket to give you some space to slide this pan out, um, do that. Uh, so you're going to need to do that to get it out and to get it in. Because what it is, is like I showed you guys, this two-piece uh, transmission disc stick, it gets in the way of it coming down and straight out um, as easy as it looked like it should. But... That's not the case. So, um, so yeah, so all these bolts are tightened up. Uh, if you got a torque wrench, um, torque them to spec. Uh, they shouldn't be really no tighter than like 15 foot pounds or something. Um, I used a little, my little snap on ratchet. So it could keep, it, it'll help me from over torquing it. And my, uh, extension and 10 mil um but yeah if you got a torque wrench use a torque wrench but um just be smart hand tighten it don't over tighten these things because they will strip out so that's pretty much all you need to uh, know from underneath um like i said these two bolts and this transmission cooler line bolt right there and it should give you some play to get out now what y'all gonna have to do you are going to have to finagle with this a little bit because I'm telling you, it ain't going to come out as easy as it should, but especially on the ground. I mean, on the lift, is much easier, uh, but obviously we're on the ground, so that's why it's going to be a little bit harder. So let's go up top real quick, and I'll show you guys what's going on. So now we're going to put the oil uh inside now up here um when you go to put this uh the top half of your dipstick back in that's gonna fight you a little bit too um because uh i had a hard time getting it back in there um let me change this light because that light was like flickering a lot all right hold on so 
Hold on. Let me get a flashlight. <laughs> I never got my lights. And he's charging up here. I just want to show y'all real quick. Um, I don't know if y'all can see down there. As you can see, I got two screwdrivers here. Um, let me see. Right where my screwdriver is at, of course y'all can't see. But like I showed you earlier, uh, this is a two-piece uh, transmission dipstick. So when you go to put uh, this top half back in there, um, it's not going to be as easy as it was when we took it out. It's just not. Um, so you're going to have to finagle with that too. And what I did was I used this pry bar right here. And I got up in here like this. And I put this pry bar on top of the dipstick. That's a part of the transmission. I, I put it on top of that so I can like basically put it in the position that I want it in. And then I slid this, this half down into the hole and I actually used this uh, screwdriver because there's a lip on this second, on this top half, there's a lip and I used it to, to basically push it into the, uh, the bottom half of the dipstick. So, um, I mean, you may not have to do it, it might just slide in for you. I don't know, but it gave me a hard time putting it back in. I don't remember going to do that the last time either. It's kind of weird. It's been, it's been at least five or six years since I did it. But um, that's that. So, I mean, these having this to guide the dipstick down for you and put it in a position you want it in and then slide this in, this top half in, that may work for you. So, figured I'll let you guys know that. Um, so, like I, like I said, um, I did get... The uh, the the other gasket. Um, now you guys might be wondering. Uh, oh man, I still got to put fluid in there, right? All right. Um, if you guys wanted like the original gasket, this is the like original gasket. The last time I did it, I reused this, but as y'all can see, it has like a an indentation in it. And basically, like, if I had the pan off, you would see the pan has this that same, I don't know. I don't know if this is, like, factory like that or if it just, uh, I don't know. It, it printed itself like that over the years. But I don't know. I, I think that's just how it's made from the factory. But I doubt that they, uh, I don't know. They, the only way you would get that is if you got it from Lexus. Um, otherwise, you'd be getting like a Felpro gasket, which is what I got. Um, and I can show you guys that so you can uh, order it. Um, but look how dirty this fluid is, though. Like, look. This fluid is brown. It's not red. That's brown. Like, and it's only been five, five or six years since I did it. But this fluid shouldn't look this dirty, like, after only that many years. Like, not transmission fluid, oil is different, but I mean, I got cars that my fluid is still red. Like I, I, like I just put it in. This right here is like really dirty and it's milky dirty too. Like it's kind of crazy. So let me show y'all, let me show y'all the, uh, so this is the gasket right here. So if I order from like Rock Auto or whatever, um, you end up getting this. All right, it's Felpro, part number TS, TOS 18748. So y'all yeah, know Felpro is one of the best gasket makers out there, right? Or at least the biggest. Um, so yeah, if y'all wanna order y'all a gasket, grab that, it's a 19 bolt gasket. It has to have 19 bolts. I actually went to Napa for the second time to try to get the right part again. And they ordered me the wrong part for the second time. So, yeah, that's what's been going on. My car been sitting here just like this. Um, so, <laughs> um, so yeah, let's go over to the Amso station. Amso station. So, we're going to use the uh, Amso 
automatic transmission fluid. We're gonna throw that in there. I'm gonna send them right here. Let's walk over to the funnel station. Okay. All right. We're gonna use this guy here. Might as well. So all we gotta do now, guys. Oh, let me show you something real quick. Let me show y'all something. I totally forgot. So we're gonna stick this guy. We gotta fill her up. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna probably put, cause this car only take, it only, for a drain and fill, it's only like three and a half quarts. Somewhere like that, three and a half quarts. Um, so it's not like we're draining the whole converter and all that shit, which, which would probably be like 10 quarts. We only did a drain and fill, so it'll probably be only like, it's only like three and a half quarts. All right, so. Let me uh, show you guys real quick what I did. So with the gasket, with this gasket, first of all, this gasket only goes on one way. There is a specific way this gasket go on. So you can't just lay it on there and go. The bolts only line up, the holes only line up one way. So with the gasket, with the other one, cause I ordered two of them. Um, I got this gasket, uh, I laid it over here. And what you want to do is, you know, lay the gasket down. And then, like I told you guys earlier, you can spray your gasket or you can spray the pan around the pan, whichever way. I sprayed the, the gasket itself this time. And use some of this high tech spray gasket sealant. As you can see, I left the print all the way around. So you can do that and then lay it onto your pan, however you want to do it. Um, that's about it. I think I covered everything. Um, so let me just um, get this floor set up real quick, and then we're gonna uh, we're gonna start her up. All right. So we got the Amzo. We're gonna open it up real quick. I know y'all wanted to see me pour it, so I have to show y'all. Open her up. So the, the car is jacked up still, so it's still on four jack stands right now. So it's still perfectly level. So you don't have to really worry about, well, if your car is jacked up like mine, you don't have to worry about it being unleveled. Can y'all see how red this fluid is? Look at that. That's very, very red. That's how it should look, not like dark or milky brown or black it should look like this so because there's still a lot of fluid in here i know in the next in the next few days of me driving this car the fluid is going to look nowhere near as good as it looks right now because it's going to mix up with the other five quarts but um we're not doing the entire flush but you could do this. You could do a drain and fill on this a few times. It's got a drain bolt. And you could just drain it a couple times until it'll stay like this. Or you could do it the proper way and flush it out. But you don't want to really flush it with these many miles on your car. Your car got so many miles on it, you don't want to really flush it, flush it. A drain and fill is perfectly fine. But you don't want to flush, 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 flush. That, that can actually hurt your transmission. So, the, um, I only check out this. You know what? I'm tripping. I'm going to pour a little bit more in there. And then the, the entire time I ordered this, uh, this, this gasket, um, this car was just sitting and it's just been draining into that big pan. So, I'm pretty sure uh, a lot more fluid, I got a lot more fluid out than just your average, you know, draining. Um, so, on this, uh, on the Amazon bottles, they got the quartz on the side. You can actually, uh, you can actually see the quartz on the side, so. I'm down to almost a quart, so that means I put 
three quarts in there. This is, they say it's one U.S. gallon. I don't know. I swear these aren't full gallons, but apparently they are. So we're gonna put um, almost three and a half quarts in there, and then we're gonna start it, run through the gears real quick, and then check our fluid and see if we're good. So right now, I think we put. About three and a half quarts in there. So, fuck. I meant to open the door too. So I can start this car. So all you gotta do is now is just take your, uh, your funnel out, catch it. All right, so you wanna get your dipstick. Run your dipstick in there real quick. And yeah, y'all, I did put my bolt back down there, that 12 millimeter bolt. I did put that back. You wanna put that back. So, all right. I'm just checking it right now just to, just to look at it. Make sure there's plenty of fluid in there. All right, we're gonna start her up. Y'all gonna get a Lexus cold start. Ew. Yeah. Let's get it. Get a Lexus cold start. Man. Oh shit. Look like I left a joint in there. Oh my gosh. Don't get the key. Oh shit. Check it out. Fully D, pause it, screenshot it, and it's gone. Don't worry, I don't make no money off of that. All right, y'all. So I'm gonna check this fluid with y'all one time. I know it ain't nowhere near warmed up because but I ain't gonna sit here too long. I ain't gonna keep you up too long. Look, the car's still cold. I gotta let this car run for at least, this drone gonna run for at least a half an hour to check the transmission floor. I mean, this car is bone cold right now, so it's gonna take a while to warm up. But you wanna check your fluid. Make sure you wipe this with your rag. Real good. So in here you got a uh, you got a hot spot, a hot mark, and a cold mark down there. So when it's fully hot. It should be sitting right here. So, yeah, see, right now is all the way down there. So, as it warms up, it'll, it'll come up. I put about three and a half quarts in there, so I already know it's pretty close to where it should be at. So I'm just gonna let it run for a half an hour or so, and then I'm gonna come back and check it. Um, but yeah, man, I hope I ain't forget anything, man. If I helped you guys out in this video, hit the like button, uh, subscribe to the channel. Um, if I got any bonus footage, y'all know I'm gonna come back and see y'all at the end of this video. Um, but uh, hopefully I covered everything and um, shows you guys what you need to do to get this done real quick and easy. So, catch y'all on the next one. All right, y'all. 
I don't know if this is bonus footage or what, but fuck it, we got some bonus footage. So let me show y'all something real quick. So if y'all don't, if y'all don't trust yourself getting, you know, doing this whole transmission and you know taking out the dipstick and all this other stuff, dropping the pan, these do have a a, a fill plug. So if you just want to drain it and fill it, you can't. You do it right here on the uh on the drain plug right here. It's a 14 millimeter. All you gotta do is just take that loose, let your transmission fluid drain out um, completely, put the screw back on, just like that. And then all you gotta do is just come up top and basically do basically do what I showed you guys. Just fill it up right here so that's all you have to do if you don't want to mess with this uh dipstick and all this and dropping the pan getting it out fighting with it because it's pretty it could get pretty agitating so especially if you want to ground and not on the lift um you can just drain and fill it now you if you haven't done it in a while I, I, I advise you to change the filter though get the filter done but like like i just did i just changed the filter changed the fluid and then like in the next Two or three months or something if i want to do another quick change to get some of that fluid other dirty fluid out and do another quick uh drain and fill then you, you use your drain plug all right y'all this is basically bonus footage number two um you already know i should have had this in a video but i didn't all right so what you want to do is you want to get in your car and you want to change your uh switch your gears so, put your foot in the brake. You want to go into reverse. All right, leave it there for a couple minutes. Now, my car is still up on the jack. So, if I let go, my wheels are going to go. All right. Yeah, neutral. And you want to go down to drive. And this is a five speed. So, I got five gears over yeah i was just sitting i was like oh man i didn't show him you know to get in the car to just uh change the gears i'm like oh man bonus footage number two i'm sorry we in uh we in third gear second gear Y'all right. know what that button is for, right? That's the power button right there. It is this car basically has sport mode. You know what I mean? And then this is for your snow right here. Your snow mode, snow and ice. So you want to go through all your gears. Alright. Go through all your gears. Just like that. Low, right there. All right, so you just wanna do that for a couple minutes um, and then check your fluid. So let it, let it warm up, run through your gears, then check your fluid for the proper level um, and go from there. So, all right, y'all, catch you on the next one.